Welcome everybody. In this video cheat sheet we're going to be hard coding an OSPF v3 router ID. We're going to start off with our baseline show commands of show IPv6 OSPF and interface brief. We're then going to execute a debug command of debug IPv6 OSPF events while we hard code the OSPF v3 router ID so that we can see how things unfold and then we're going to finish up with the verification show command of show IPv6 OSPF. So let's look at the network topology. We're going to be hard coding the router ID for the OSPF v3 here on router 2. It has already been done throughout the rest of the network so we're just going to do it here on router 2. Let's get started with our show IPv6 OSPF command. And as you can see from the last video cheat sheet when we enabled OSPF v3 routing here on router 2, we got the router ID right here, got the router ID of 22.22.22.22. .22 that is an IPv4 address. We're talking about OSP OSPF v3's router ID which routes IPv6 addresses. Well even though OSPF v3 routes IPv6 addresses and only IPv6 addresses, it still needs an IPv4 router ID. Not sure why they designed it that way. I'm sure there's a really good reason, but uh, I'm not aware of what that reason is. So let's do a show IP interface brief to see what interfaces. Oh, I'm sorry, that's supposed to be an IP. No, no, no. That, that's supposed to be an IP interface brief. That is correct. As you can see, OSPF v3 dynamically went out and grabbed the highest IP for the loopback, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. But we, we don't want it to be that IP address. We want it to be loopback zero's IP address, and that's what we're going to change it to. So let's execute our debug command, and we're going to do a debug IPv6 OSPF events. We'll see how things unfold and what the router thinks as we change the OSPF v3 router ID. And just like with OSPF version 2, the way you change the router ID is underneath the OSPF v3 process ID. You do the command router-id and then the, once again, the IPv4 address that you want to hard code the router ID to. I always recommend that you hard code your router IDs. Um, anytime you can hard code it, that is a good thing so that if something does dynamically happen and changes, it doesn't cause any problems in the middle of the night. You know exactly what your router ID is supposed to be. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hard code our router ID. So we just changed it from 22, which was what it was up here and what it chose dynamically, and we just hard-coded it to 2. And the only thing that we got from our debug IPv6 OSPF events command that we executed earlier is this flush links right here. And the reason it flushed it was because we changed the router ID. So now let's really see if the command took with our verification show command of show IPv6 OSPF and sure enough now our router ID is now 2.2.2.2 .2 which is our loopback 0 IPv4 address which is what we configured it to. So that is how you hard code an OSPF v3 router ID. Once again it is an IPv4 address or a 32-bit address even though we are configuring it for OSPF v3 which routes IPv6 prefixes. So we started off with our baseline show commands of show IPv6 OSPF and interface brief to see what the, the router had for an, uh, for an interface. Uh, and for its router ID. Then we executed the debug command to see how things unfolded as we went through this process and hard-coded the router ID and thusly we were changing it from the dynamic router ID that it had chosen. And then we finished up with our show IPv6 OSPF command to ensure that the router ID had changed to the loopback zero interface that we wanted.